step into a world cloaked in intrigue and controversy as we unveil the enigmatic events behind France's stunning collapse. From the shadows of blitzkrieg warfare to whispered whispers of betrayal, join us on a thrilling journey through why France fell so fast, exploring the factors behind the swift defeat in World War II, and challenge your perception of history. It was May 1940, when the German war machine launched its audacious assault on France. The Blitzkrieg started combining tanks, infantry, and air support, rolling through the Ardennes forest, a region considered impassable for large-scale military movements. With lightning speed, the Germans broke through French defenses, leaving their adversaries stunned and struggling to respond. The swift advancement of the German forces caught the French off guard as key cities and strategic points fell like dominoes. The French military, though valiantly resisting, was outmaneuvered by the relentless momentum of the Blitzkrieg. The Maginot Line, once thought impenetrable, faced an assault it wasn't designed to withstand. The German forces exhibited exceptional coordination and deception, infiltrating deep into French territory, sowing confusion and chaos. Yet, the Blitzkrieg's sheer speed and vast front lines also posed logistical challenges for the German war machine as the dust settled. France stood at a crossroads, a nation stunned by the rapid onslaught. The bewildering blitzkrieg left little time for France to regroup, leading to astonishing surrenders and the fall of the French government. The fall of France shook the world, leaving both admirers and critics of the blitzkrieg strategy. Some hailed it as a masterpiece of military tactics, while others questioned the moral implications of such lightning warfare. France's leadership, though filled with experienced military minds, grappled with internal divisions and indecision that hampered their response. To the Blitzkrieg onslaught, the German Blitzkrieg caught the French high command off guard, challenging their established doctrines and strategies. A lack of unity and cooperation between military leaders and the government led to fragmented decision-making, blurring the path forward. As the Germans launched their audacious attack through the Ardennes, French leaders faced a crisis of command that left them scrambling to devise an effective response. The Blitzkrieg's swift pace demanded immediate and decisive actions, yet conflicting viewpoints and bureaucratic hurdles hindered timely responses amid the chaos of battle. Communication breakdowns further complicated the French command's ability to coordinate its defense. While some leaders advocated aggressive counterattacks, others emphasized cautious defensive measures. The divergence of strategies further eroded the cohesion of the French forces, leaving them vulnerable to the precision of the Blitzkrieg. In contrast, German leadership under the firm direction of Adolf Hitler and experienced commanders maintained a unified front. The German high command executed a well-coordinated strategy that maximized the advantages of the Blitzkrieg. The absence of a decisive and unified approach within the French leadership contributed to a critical turning point in the war. As France grappled with the devastating aftermath of the fall of France, Questions arose about the effectiveness of its leadership and command structure. During those crucial days, the story of leadership and command in the fall of France serves as a powerful reminder of the profound impact leadership decisions can have on the fate of nations during times of crisis. Collaboration. The uneasy alliance between some French factions and the German occupiers emerged in the wake of the fall of France. Some saw collaboration as a pragmatic response to the overwhelming might of the German forces, while others regarded it as betrayal. The collaborationist Vichy government, under Marshal Philippe Pétain, sought to maintain a semblance of French sovereignty, albeit under German control. However, the Vichy government's policies, including cooperation with Nazi authorities and the enactment of anti-Semitic laws, 
fueled controversy and resistance from within and beyond France's borders. Amidst the shadows of collaboration, a flicker of hope emerged in the form of the French Resistance, a diverse and daring network of patriots operating clandestinely. The Resistance sought to sabotage German efforts, disseminate intelligence, and protect vulnerable communities. Under the leadership of figures like General Charles de Gaulle, the Free French Forces symbolized the defiance of a nation and willing to surrender its spirit. Despite facing harsh consequences for their actions, the bravery of the resistance fighters and their unwavering commitment to liberty inspired hope in a nation overshadowed by defeat. The interplay between collaboration and resistance weaved a complex tapestry of moral ambiguity and heroism. Collaborators, some driven by fear or perceived self-preservation, cooperated with the occupying forces leading to division and mistrust within French society. On the other hand, the resistance fighters represented the resilience of the French spirit, holding a glimmer of hope for a brighter future. As the war raged on, collaborationist efforts proved short-lived, while the resistance grew in strength, bolstering the allied cause. The struggle between collaboration and resistance during the fall of France remains a poignant reminder of the complexities faced by a nation in crisis. The invasion triggered a mass exodus of civilians, with families fleeing their homes to escape the advancing German forces. The specter of uncertainty haunted the lives of millions, leaving behind shattered communities in the wake of displacement. As occupation took hold, the German authorities enforced strict control over French daily life, leading to curfews, restrictions, and censorship. The German occupation fueled fear and resistance, with civilians navigating a precarious balance between survival and defiance. Amidst the upheaval, the Vichy government's collaborationist policies added another layer of complexity to the societal impact. The enactment of anti-Semitic laws and collaboration with Nazi authorities left deep scars on the French psyche and drew the ire of the resistance. The decision to surrender, culminating in the signing of the armistice in Compiègne, marked a critical turning point in the fate of France. While some saw surrender as a pragmatic choice, amidst overwhelming odds, others viewed it as a painful betrayal of national pride the aftermath of surrender gave rise to heated debates within French society, prompting soul-searching and questioning of leadership. The surrender decision also kindled the embers of resistance, as defiant spirits rallied under the banner of General Charles de Gaulle. In the face of adversity, the resilience of the French people shone through, igniting hope for a future of liberation and restoration. The societal impact and surrender decision during the fall of France left an indelible mark on the nation's history. The fall of France, a moment that forever altered the course of history, serves as a poignant reminder of the complexities of war and the indomitable spirit of the human heart. From the blitzkrieg's lightning strikes to the choices of collaboration and resistance and the profound societal impact, each facet of this historical saga adds depth to our understanding of the past. The legacy of the fall of France lives on, a testament to the courage of those who resisted, the bravery of those who fought, and the resilience of a nation rising from the ashes of defeat. As we continue our exploration of history, may we carry with us the lessons learned from the fall of France, a testament to the human spirit the consequences of leadership and the choices we face during times of adversity. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you soon in Pages of History.